When Marvel decided to get quirky with Guardians of the Galaxy three years ago, the gamble paid off big time. So how do you follow up such a success? The stars themselves tell us the formula. Just like the Guardians, we're huddling closely to one another and just, you know, breaking it down one film at a time. And I'm really thrilled with this movie. I think it's terrific. The late 70s, 80s are really getting their play, especially in this movie. I like the aspect of the future being connected with the past. I think there's something to that that we can all have a ball with. I think that we kind of upped our game a little bit with this one. There certainly are high expectations heaped on these Guardians. After the first installment raked in over $770 million worldwide, it's no surprise that Volume 2 is expected to be one of the biggest hits of 2017. Awesome! We're really going to be able to jack up our prices for two-time Galaxy Savers. Plus, there's the inevitable pressure of becoming a record breaker. And in the new age of the global box office, where more and more films are being released at the same time worldwide instead of country by country, the record to beat is the global box office opening total. It's been broken twice in as many years by 2015 Star Wars The Force Awakens, and more recently by the massive success of The Fate of the Furious. One thing I can guarantee, no one's ready for this. With a global haul of over $900 million and counting, Fast 8 is doing laps around new films at the box office, but Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is looking to give Dom, Hobbs, and company a run for their money come May 5th. Here's how. First, the gang's all here. The scrappy oddball characters we loved in the first film are back and getting deeper storylines this time around. Plus, there's baby Groot. But Volume 2 is also introducing a handful of new characters into the space opera, including Kurt Russell as Ego, the long-lost father of Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord. I'm your dad, Peter. And Elizabeth Debicki is getting early rave reviews for her turn as the ice-cold empress Aisha. Guardians of the Galaxy's other secret weapon for success is keeping the focus on Chris Pratt's unique and hilarious brand of star power as Star-Lord. Dude, come on, I think you're overreacting a little bit. You must be so embarrassed! We'll have to wait until next Friday to find out if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 has what it takes to shake up box office records. Early reviews rolling in from movie critics seem to argue Volume 2 is a great film, but it's no Volume 1. We'll have to see if the masses agree. That's a really bad sign. Cause I get chills when I see you on a Friday night Stepping out on the porch in the moonlight So fine, I got time the James Barker Band is heating up the charts and making waves in the country music scene. TK caught up with the Canadian group to talk about their rising star. Oh my God, so excited because I'm with the James Barker Band and you guys just dropped your official EP. Congratulations, Game On is out. It is out. It is out to the, to the world. You're kicking off uh, on a tour across Canada, right? Yeah, it goes all the way from here to the to the left coast and back. I mean, how excited are you also to be touring with Keith Urban, opening for him on a couple of shows when he hits Quebec? I don't even know if that's sunk in yet because Keith Urban was a huge inspiration for all of us growing up. It's crazy even to get to go to like a show and be like close to the front or like to be backstage, we'd probably all freak out, but to get to actually open up for him is like mind boggling. <laughs> And coming up tomorrow, the stars of Fargo tell us about season three's inevitable twists and turns.